you wanna do? do city with the crew, I done get some food. I see you looking like your dude. I done make a move, make a move. So Alright, look, y'all. Today's Rikers Island story is filled with action and suspense and unsuspected plot twists. Now, there was a guy in One Lower. I know I've mentioned being in One Lower in Rikers Island before. I was there for maybe three months, but within three months, a whole lot of stuff happened. So this is the in-between part. This is after the first situation happened in One Low, but this is before I got jumped and spanked out the crib by all the pot yards in One Low. This is like an in-between time. Being that when I first got there, the two people that ran the crib were on their way upstate, there was a lot of transitioning going on. There was a lot of people giving other people the crib, stuff like that. So, and, and by me saying a lot of other people had the crib, I'm saying that within weeks, two to six different people had the crib. It was, it was a shit show. But anyways... For the little bit of time being, there's another Brooklyn dude. Uh, this Brooklyn dude was in PC for whatever reason, and then he came out of PC, and for some reason, the dude that had the crib before him knew him and gave him the crib. I don't know, but all I know is this dude was in PC. I don't think it was, I think it was one of those situations where he had so much beef that he got spanked out of every single crib and they had to put him in PC. I heard that that's the situation that happens, that occurs. But anyways, this dude ends up with the crib. Now, a new guy comes into the crib. This guy is from New Jersey. I believe he just happened to be in the Bronx or something like that and caught a charge, thus sending him to Rikers out. Now, I'm calling him New Jersey because this is the, the dude's name. Like, that was his name that everybody started calling him because he was from New Jersey. Now, bro comes to the crib. Um, He knows absolutely nothing about the island. Um, This is his first time ever being in jail. I think he caught maybe a robbery charge or something like that. But yeah, he's on Rikers Island. He gets to one lower. Now, initially he comes in, him not knowing nothing about the island. He takes a seat in the back, just chilling. So me and that, he took a seat in the back, just chilling. Um, he is presumed to be with it, following the program, respecting protocol, a certified day room dummy, nondescript, right? So he's sitting there. Me personally, I wasn't, I was never the dude who, when a new guy comes in, I'm sweating him and trying to press him and scare him as if I really care about all this extra street slash gang slash Rikers Island politics. You know what I'm saying? So I didn't bother the dude. I'm like, it's, they got the dudes that run the crib and the lackeys who want to jump out the window and try to press everybody. So, just like how it goes on Rikers Island, they begin to question this dude and press him. They first started off by asking for phone calls and stuff like that, stuff like that. But within a day or two's time, he begins to understand what a day room dummy is and what it means to be with it. Naturally, he starts rebelling against the situation. Um, he didn't know he didn't know too much, but he knew that he wasn't gonna let nobody violate him. He wasn't gonna let nobody play him, and he decided to stand on that. Now, while he's rebelling and he's now standing up, and they want him to sit down because one bad apple spoils a bunch. If you got one dude that's supposed to be a damn dummy, and he's standing up. That will inspire the other damn dummies to stand up 
and them dummies do have higher numbers than the dudes that run the house. So you wanna you wanna take care of that one person before you have a revolution on your hands. And revolutions have happened not too many times, but they have happened. I got a story for that coming in the future. Anyway, what's going on is. It's later on in the day, and we know that a particular CO is going to come, and this particular CO allows the men to have their fights, as long as he is aware of it, so he can make sure things don't get too out of hand. Um, so, when this particular officer comes on shift, the guy who runs the house, goes up to New Jersey and he says, okay, so you're not with it. You're not giving no phone calls that I ask you. You ain't been a commissary yet and you keep standing up. So what you saying? You going to be a problem in this house? New Jersey is like, listen, I just want to do my time. I just don't, I'm not giving nobody nothing. I'm going to stay out your way. Just leave me alone. He's saying it like, just leave me alone. One knows that when a person is backed up into a corner, they're likely to do some real crazy slash wild slash gangster shit. So, including me, everyone in the house presumes this person to be soft and not about their life, but I gave him points for deciding that he was going to put his foot down and that he was willing to fight for his respect. So, this Dude who has the crib, who was in PC, who never had a crib before, who was just given a crib because he was cool with the person who had it before him. He challenges, he challenges this guy, New Jersey, to a one-on-one fight in the shower. Okay, so I'm watching in the day room as the person who runs the crib. He sends somebody to New Jersey to tell him, okay, you want to get your weight up? You don't want to be with it? Go have a talk in the shower. Be prepared for anything. Okay, so I watched New Jersey. He gets ready like he's going in the shower. He has his slippers on. He has his shorts. I'm like, one, I'm like, I don't know why this man decided to go in the shower. That's never good for anyone up to this point. Everybody I've seen go in the shower who was told to go in the shower took a loss. So boom. They go in the shower. All you hear is tussling. Do, 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 Right? It's a lot going on. But immediately I hear like a like a like a signal call. Like a signal call, which is basically the person who got the crib signaling for the other person who got the crib to go into the shower. Now, it just so happened that New Jersey was beating this dude ass, was spanking him, spanking him, beating him up. He called for reinforcements, he called for help. Now, inside of that shower, inside of that shower, the new, the other guy who had the crib runs in, throws New Jersey in the chicken wing thing that we all learned from one man, right? So he got him in there. They struggling. They struggling. Now it's me and a couple more dudes. We hovering, watching. The CO knows what's going on, but he don't think it's out of hand yet. So he ain't stopped nothing. But they got him in a full Nelson. But it's wet in there, right? So somehow, some way, New Jersey slips out of whatever little Ford Nelson they had, right? He slips out of it. He pushes off the dude that had him in the Ford Nelson. He runs back to the first dude, start beating him up some more, right? So the dude that got the crib is hunched over, right? Trying to guard his face. New Jersey is just swinging, right? Swinging, swinging, hitting him in the ribs, hitting him in the face. I see the dude that got the crib. He went inside his pocket. Yes, he had on shorts inside the shower. I don't want to make it seem like nobody was naked. But he goes inside his pocket and he takes a wild swing without looking. But he swings below the rib cage, below the waist area of New Jersey. He's like blind, so he takes a swing. He takes a swing. Initially, it looks like nothing. It looks just like a bad swing, right? So they tussling, tussling. Eventually the CO comes in. 
He breaks everything up. Now, the first dude that went in to help, he comes out first. Nothing really happened to him. He was just basically a bystander trying to help his mans. Boom. The second guy comes out. This is the first guy who, who challenged New Jersey to come into the shower. He comes out. He got a black eye. He really looked like he got washed. New Jersey comes out. New Jersey comes out. He's turned up. He's turned up. I look down at his left leg. He got a cut. Now, clearly, clearly the dude that got the crib cut him. And in my opinion, he was soft for that. He was losing the fight. He took it extra. It was already an extra dude in there. Boom. He lost all my respect right then and there. Now, New Jersey is turned up now. New Jersey, mind you, he learned a little bit more about the island. He comes out, he hype. He's saying, yo, I beat you up. This my crib. Like, this my crib. This is New Jersey crib. He like, hey, we'll see about that. We'll see about that. We'll see about that. Just so happened, next day, New Jersey gets packed up and gets moved to Five Low. New Jersey takes over Five Low and becomes a legend on Rikers Island. Never let nobody play with him again. He beat up a bunch of dudes. He took a couple cribs. He really went down as a legend. If you was on the island around my time, you will know about this dude named New Jersey. He was a presumed day room dummy, was challenged by the person who had the house, beat him up, handed him his ass on the platter, defeated him one-on-one, -on -one, took the crib, technically took the crib, Took the crib, got snitched on. Somehow, some way, he got packed up. He got moved to five lower. Took the crib. Took the crib again. His name was buzzing. He became a legend on Rikers Island. C seventy four man. This is a story about how a day room dummy, presumably, got challenged to a fight, beat up the person who had the crib, and went on to be a problem in C seventy four Rikers Island. Like, share, subscribe, peace.